I, like everybody else in this country, am watching and witnessing in real time our country be systematically dismantled, piece by piece, issue by issue. And this intense irony is happening that all the bad things that we're now seeing manifest in our country are happening under the guise of progress. In the name of progress, the border stands wide open and fentanyl is rushing in with all of our young people dying in the hundreds of thousands. In the name of progress, gasoline and food is through the roof because we gotta get you over to electric cars. So hey, just deal with the pain. In the name of progress, you get out of Afghanistan with such a debacle. We ended a war. Yeah, look what you left behind in the name of progress. In the name of progress, we take God out of the conversation because God can't exist anymore. In the name of progress, they uh, target our kids in schools. They try to indoctrinate our kids at every possible term, and so on and so on and so on. And so as a songwriter, I'm sitting around watching this. I'm a dad, I'm a business owner. I grew up in a double wide trailer in Texas. I have a high school diploma. That is my pedigree, nothing fancy with me. I'm watching this going on and I went, that is so ironic. And if that's their definition of progress, they can stick it where the sun don't shine. Stick your progress where the sun don't shine. That's the way I took it. And I said, you know what? I, th I think I'm gonna write that into a song. So I sat down with a couple of uh, friends of mine in Nashville, Jeffrey Steele, Vicki McGee, both former songwriters of the year, patriots, hardworking Americans. I told them the idea for the song Progress. We sat down and wrote it in one afternoon and I recorded it. And I think it's interesting in our country, when you think about putting out a song like Progress, it says, stick it where the sun don't shine. You would think that a song like that would only uh, be accepted and embraced by the right, by the conservatives. But in reality, what's going on in our country is Americans are finding unity in the pain that they are experiencing. Everybody has to buy gas. Everybody has to buy groceries. If you've got kids, you feel a certain way about your kids just like the other parents that are different sides of the political spectrum. Leave my kids alone. I'm the parent, not you. And so on and so forth. So I think this song actually is coming out at the perfect time and I'm hoping that it hits everybody's ears in the way it was intended, which is basically a, a grin on your face and one of these. That, that's what it's intended to be. Stick your progress where the sun don't shine. Keep your... I think when you look at uh, some of these polls that have come out showing 80 plus percent of Americans say America is not going in the right direction, that is a good thing to see. And again, it's because the guys in control now have stepped so far out over the bounds of reality that it's impacting everybody of all political backgrounds. If you gotta pick between putting gas in your car or buying groceries, how many people had to cancel their family vacations this summer because of gas prices? And they just came out of a pandemic when they couldn't take a, a vacation there either. It is negatively impacting people across the country. So. To see, them, to see them coming on board, I like the fact that I can now look at somebody that I know is diametrically opposed to me politically, but as a human and as an American, we see it exactly the same way. Isn't that interesting? Unity in the pain. I really believe that's what's going on. The negative pushback I've, I've gotten uh, from my songs has been from people that used to, used to spend millions of dollars behind my career, behind Big and Rich. You know, they're not there anymore. But you know what, man? What's that trophy worth? What, really? I mean, it's nice to get one. It's nice to get a number one plaque at radio, or it's nice to get duo of the year. It's nice to get those things. I've got a few of them downstairs. But those things are just, they last that long. What's permanent? Integrity's permanent. Conviction is permanent. Being an American is permanent. Liberty is permanent. These are, you know, Setting an example for your kids is permanent. That's extremely permanent. That'll affect them forever and generations on down the road. I decided to focus on the things that are permanent and invest my time and energy and soul into that instead of the things that are temporary and are flash in the pan stuff. So yeah, I got a lot of pushback. They've kicked me out of their club. I don't want to be in their club anyway. Matter of fact, I've said this many times. If everybody likes what you have to say, you're not saying it correctly. You should have a healthy amount of pushback. You should have a whole contingency of people that literally hate everything about you and what you say, if you're saying it correctly. 
I don't want those people to approve of what I have to say or who I am as a person. If they approved of me, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. That's a real statement. If they were like, man, we, we love you, John, you're great, I'd go, yuck. I don't want that. I want them to go, I can't believe, he's up, he's this bad word, that bad word, and this bad word. You call me all the bad words you want, your hatred for me is validation that I'm saying it correctly. So when I heard Daily Wire was coming to Nashville, I was so pumped, because I've been a fan forever. Candace and Ben and all the, all the great people there. And I heard they were coming to Nashville. I didn't know anybody personally at the Daily Wire. It was a couple years ago, a year and a half maybe. So I basically just cold called Daily Wire. Daily Wire, how many director call? I said, I don't know, I don't know anybody. It's John Rich from Big and Rich. I said, I'm so excited y'all are coming to Nashville. I'd like to throw you a welcome to Nashville party at my house, which is where we're sitting right now. You see the stage behind me. They went, really? They said, well, we've got like 160 people, you know, that will come. I go, well, I can handle 200. They went, you're serious? I went, absolutely, let's set it up. I just want you to know how much we appreciate you being in our town and you've got a lot of friends here. So we set up the party right behind me here. We had a big table. I had Ben and Candace and Michael and everybody was sitting. Travis Tritt got up and played. I got up and played. It, it was an incredible night. Everybody got to, you know, have a little cocktail, have a little cigar here and there, and shake hands and get to know each other. And it's been an incredible relationship ever since. I, I think that uh, we think a lot of the same thoughts, and it's important for artists and platforms like Daily Wire to forge friendships, especially when the liberal industry is is crucifying artist after artist right now, and and movie makers and, and all types of other people. If you're gonna battle in the culture war. How do you know when you're winning? You know you're winning when you take part of their property away from them. And what is their property in my case? That would be the number one sales position on the billboard chart. That's the most coveted spot you can get. So with a song like Progress, my goal is to take away their number one spot and move it over to our side of the board for a minute. That's how you know you're winning.